Hello, so not talking about myself for once. No 30 minutes of me jabbering and going into rabbit trails. Um, just gonna talk about a topic that I think is really important for everybody, um, which is boundaries. Boundaries is really important. First of all, I'll tell you the definition. So boundaries, according to the definition off the internet, is a line that marks the limits of an area, a dividing line. Um, a limit of a subject or a sphere of activity. So that's important. So basically, you know, the common saying, good fences make good neighbors, and, you know, drawing a line in the sand between you and another person of setting limits. So having limits and voicing that and not being afraid to voice it is really, really important for yourself and really, really, really important to teach to your children. Um, so for me, myself, I grew up in foster care, and what's difficult is I would have boundaries, and I would set limits, and then I would get yelled at, I would lose privileges, the few privileges I had, and would get grounded, extra chores, and so it became easier just to keep my mouth shut and to do what I was told because less yelling, less chores, just less everything with those people. So it was really hard when I aged out of the system and I had to find who I was and learn through a lot of bad relationships about, and especially relationships with managers and jobs about how important it is to set boundaries. So, um, good fences make good neighbors. So case in point, I do have an upstairs neighbor that is awful. <laughs> so I live in an apartment complex, obviously. And uh, she thinks it's like the medieval times, you know, where they would throw their rubbish and their trash, you know, out their window instead of, you know, taking it and burning it or taking it to a dumpster like a normal person. So this lady, <laughs> does not take her three small dogs out. And instead, she just dumps it out her window, out of her balcony, all over my balcony. And finally, I got her on videotape, or well, not videotape, but my cell phone. I, I videoed her doing that behavior because this has been going on for over a year now. I've been here since 2020. So yeah, it's been two years. So she's been doing this behavior for two years and every time I'd report it, nothing would happen because I didn't have proof. It was my word against her word and she would go kind of crazy and would just say, you know, just deny it because that's what liars do. They deny and they manipulate and then they um, turn it around back on the person that's innocent. So that's her little game that she would play. So I finally had her on videotape acting crazy because when I confronted her she started blowing up and acting crazy and saying crazy stuff and um, you know denied that she threw stuff her dog crap onto my balcony when I had video of it and watched her do it I happened to be out when she was doing that usually she watches me out the window and she has a camera and she knows when I'm out with my dog or out taking my trash out and that's when she does that behavior. So this time I caught her. Um, and uh, speaking of neighbor that video, you know, watches me through a camera and window. So there was this guy that lives in my apartment complex and like I said, I've been here two years now, over two years. And he always jogs and so he jogs going so I'll be going this way back to my apartment or I'll be going that way to take my dog out so I have a clear direction and I'm usually moved to the side to not impose on anybody and so that I don't get run over by the crazy drivers in my apartment complex this guy has had it out for me for the past two years so I'll be walking this direction he deliberately comes running and runs at me literally at me and I will move and he'll move in my same path and he'll have this little evil smirk. And so then I move again because I just want peace and I don't want to fight the guy. So he's been doing this kind of crap for the past two years. And he put an unalive, 
note on my door. He didn't sign it, so cops wouldn't do anything. Um, but he made a death threat to me, and I don't even know why. I don't know why he has it out for me. I just know that every time I go to my car and I'm in my parking lot doing whatever in my apartments, here he comes. And he always runs at me to try to intimidate and provoke me to a fight. So I finally um, let him know that I had mace and I was wearing mace on me. I, I said, I have mace. I will use it. After I said that, guess what stopped happening? He immediately when I said that he went way over and stopped jogging at me and jogged way away from me and then since then he has not come out when I'm outside so yay um the next thing I would like to talk about so Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher they've made headlines <laughs> they have a lack of boundaries that is such a toxic family they're trying to come off as cute and uh, family oriented and it's it's a complete lack of boundaries they don't they bragged about she bragged about which maybe she should just keep her mouth shut because nobody would know if she didn't talk about it or brag about it but can you imagine what she does keep private it, it's kind of scary um, but she she bragged about that there's no closed doors in their house there's no closed doors to go to the bathroom for anything so can you imagine she's got a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old so they can walk in at any time Ashton and her and Mila having sex they can walk in at any time and you know they're taking a shower going number two you know using the bathroom it's just disgusting when you think about the fact that there's no privacy and no boundaries with the children and she laughed it off as well they would always bang on the door anyway so when they're toddler age and doing that that makes sense because that's that's uh, you know a no-brainer for a toddler to do toddlers have no boundaries they knock on the door they're scared and need reassurance and need to see their parents in eyesight and are scared when they can't see their parents so being in the bathroom with their parents makes sense when they're a toddler but after toddler age when they're preschool when they're elementary age there's no reason to allow them into the bathroom while you're using the bathroom it's really disgusting and it's teaching those kids bad boundaries can you imagine the nine-year-old spending the night at a friend's house and they're playing the video games and the kids like oh hold on I gotta go use the bathroom and he goes and uses the bathroom and takes a number two and the friend's dad walks by or the mom walks by or the older sister walks by or whoever and sees this kid just taking a dump without the door shut I just you know you're teaching your kids really bad boundaries they're not gonna have boundaries if you don't teach them you that is the responsibility of a parent to teach a child and then two, being in school can you imagine I mean boys generally when they're taking you know a wee they they have the urinals and they pee in the urinals but can you imagine they're taking a dump and they don't have the stall door closed and it's just wide open for any guy to like walk past it's just uh, it's bad boundaries it's really not healthy the other person um, that is kind of under the radar but should be at the forefront just like Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher are is Al Alicia Silverstone she bragged about you know she made headlines first about eating food chewing it and then letting her son eat it out of her mouth which is a really disgusting gross thought but she was doing that her husband divorced her and then uh, she bragged about during the whole entire pandemic um, while the child was nine years old taking baths together taking a bath with him so she's fully nude he's fully nude you know getting all of your intimacy needs out of your child is toxic it's not healthy you know if you're shutting out your husband and you're not giving him intimacy as far as emotional intimacy is what I mean there's no emotional intimacy and probably no sexual intimacy either because all the intimacy needs 
especially emotional that women usually are more prone for um, was getting met with her son which is really toxic and disgusting and wrong and that kid is gonna be so messed up when he's older because there's no healthy boundaries and the intimacy uh, boundaries are really skewed for that poor kid so he's not gonna know any better um, so it's it's healthy to have boundaries um, you know I, I set boundaries with my manager and tried to several times she lacked boundaries and I could tell and um, a lot of the coworkers I had actually lacked boundaries because they thought they could be abusive and it was okay. If you don't put boundaries in assertively, I'm not saying being aggressive about it, but being assertive, you know, which I was, and if they get offended, that's on them, you know. So again, you know, being told you're going to have brain damage and, um, have a lot of mental issues down the road because you had COVID that is a uh, really not her place to even say to me as an employee I set a boundary and aligned the sand and said you need to stop saying that to me that's twice that you've talked to me like that and I'm not gonna let you continue to talk to me like that you're not an expert in the medical field you're not a scientist they're still investigating. They don't even understand COVID completely. So you need to stop talking to me like that. And, um, you know, my, I don't want to talk to you about having had COVID again. That's my health and my issue. <laughs> I'm going to keep that private. So, um, she had a need to know when I had COVID, I was open and let her know, but I worked with having COVID because their thing was as long as you've had the vaccine you can work it doesn't matter so i still worked i worked with 103 fever aches pain all the symptoms i was having and it was horrible it was worse than having the flu it was really bad and mine developed to um, pneumonia level because it was untreated i couldn't i had difficulty trying to get it treated <laughs> Everybody was so scared of, and they still are, they're scared of uh, COVID, you know, if someone coughs, you know, there's always the, you know, looking around to see who it was and if they blocked their mouth and whatnot, which I've always been an advocate of, you should block your mouth anyway before COVID happened because it's disgusting spraying all your spit on vegetables and food at a supermarket, <laughs> you know, it's so gross when you see people doing that, you know, but, um, for some reason, they do that in Texas. They just cough, and they'll cough in your face. They'll cough all over vegetables and food, and they don't care. Um, but anyway, healthy boundaries is really important. It's that little horn, you know, of, hey, stop it. Um, hey, I don't feel comfortable with this. Hey, I'd rather keep this private. Or, you know, like if someone says, you know, like, my ex-boyfriend, you know, he was an extrovert. I'm an introvert. And there would be times he would be like, you know, I want to go out and uh, do stuff. And I'd be like, so go out. And he would like, without you? I'm like, yeah. I would, I would hope that you would go and go out and have fun without me. I'm going to stay home and have fun by myself watching TV <laughs> without you around so that you're not draining me of all my energy so that I can relax. So I would encourage him to go out and, you know, do his thing and go to the pub or whatever and let me stay at home so I can just relax and not have to be around. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's just, it's healthy to voice that. And, you know, if, if someone has a, a friend that's not your friend, you shouldn't be upset about that. You know, I had my friends, they didn't like him, of course. <laughs> And um, he had his family and stuff. And, um, you know, it's, it's good to have a little bit of a separate life so that you still have your own identity instead of, like, being so immersed. You know, not to say that it's, it's wrong to be, you know, close together. It's just weird when um, you're so immersed and you, you have trust issues and you, you can't let somebody have their own Facebook. And, you know, when you see those Facebook accounts and they're their names are together 
because they can't trust each other <laughs> to be on social media, which is sad. And um, same thing with a cell phone, you know. Um, he would always go on my cell phone, and I'm like, what do you get what are you looking to find you know i'm an introvert i barely talk to anybody unless it's work or school or i have to talk to them i i'm not going to go out of my way to talk to anybody <laughs> unless i have to you know if they're a friend that i really like i'll i'll message them you know on social media i'll text them but if um i feel like i would be intruding on their privacy or their personal space or that they would feel awkward by me contacting them, I leave them alone. I might send them one message if I think it's relevant or I like them, and then after that I leave them alone, especially if they don't message back. I'm like, okay, I'm leaving them alone, you know, but um, it's just important to have those boundaries because without boundaries, like I said, you're just a doormat. You have no self-respect you have no respect from other people either. And so whether they like it or not, you've got to set the boundaries with them. So like I said, they may not like it. They may throw a fit about it. They may say some choice words towards you, but you keep that, that fence firm and you let them know you can't just come over to my side of the yard. You can't just cross over this line I made in the sand. This is my side. You stay on your side, I stay on my side. We live happily, cohesive, and peaceful that way. And, um, you know, it's healthier that way. So boundaries are important, and it's really super important to instill on kids because they're not going to know to have boundaries as an adult, and especially as a teenager, if you don't teach them that. That is important that you teach that. And, you know, if you have a friend that doesn't understand, tell them, you know, teach them about boundaries, you know, um, and they may not like you for it. I'm very direct. I told um, my friend several times she need to have boundaries with this one guy that um, was married. I said, you need to have boundaries with him. He's married. And she was like, well, he says he's going through a divorce. I said, but is he divorced? <laughs> She hated that about me. I would I would challenge her, you know, and I, I wanted her to think with her head instead of with her emotions and um, to think it through logically. And she um, she ended up being stupid and having an affair with that guy. And then he as soon as she um, got pregnant and had a miscarriage, he was like ghosted her. <laughs> so I felt bad for her, but you know she made the stupid choice to be with a, a married guy I kept telling her you need to have a boundary with this guy you know he's he's wanting his cake and eat it too and um, he's he doesn't sound like he's leaving his wife it sounds like he just wants extra on the side and you're his side item and I think you respect yourself more than to just be someone's side you should be the main course you know that a guy looks forward to not that he dreads and needs a side item you know it's just uh that guy's trash i feel for his wife and i feel for you you know but anyway um i talked 20 minutes almost 20 minutes but um have boundaries keep them with other people it's really important it helps you develop self-confidence self-respect and other people will respect you in turn they may not like you for it but again it's important for you so screw them if they don't like it that just means that uh, they're toxic and want to manipulate and run over you and it's not healthy so healthy boundaries healthy big fence line the sand thanks for watching